there are certainly comments, questions to Professor Mokada. Yes. So I have recently talked to Dr. Hausen and he was thinking that actually it seems that most cancers will be uh, vaccines or, or in the longer runs in science that that is going to be one of the reasons. Is, is part of the plan to use, you know, of course, a lot of money for early screening, but is part of the plan also to shift some of the money into vaccine development even more than now or? into vaccine development in cancer, not only the cancers which are very clearly related to uh, uh, viral inf infection, for example, in terms of cervical cancer, but in general the concept of vaccination to develop immunity against the possibility of cancer cells developing. Do these statistics also consider that if we increase life expectancy continuously, we will also increase the chances of having Alzheimer's and other generative diseases for which a cure is even more remote than for cancer? So what is the trade-off between all these different statistics? It sounds a little bit cynical, but I think one needs to consider that in terms of cost. as we live longer, we start hitting situations in which diseases appear that are diseases related to uh, uh, aging, like cancer, which is clearly related. The problem is that we are at a very early stage in that problem, and we have a large population in the world which is having the disease, and the only thing we have to do is to improve the conditions of life. Whether the trade-off at the end is going to be negative by making people live, live longer is something that I would like to discuss at this stage. Yeah, yeah you, of course you mentioned early detection as an important thing to do. Uh, my question is, particularly in the developing world, how is that implemented? Do you have something like annual, annual checkups or do you have to change the culture, educate people, or is that something that has been worked out? Well, the first, the first thing is that we need uh, uh, wider and deeper education. There is no doubt that an educated people go to the doctors first and so on and so forth and can be followed up better. But I think soon we will have methods by which, by taking a blood sample, not, we can't predict when we will know that, but genomic studies will probably start telling us about propensity to cancer or to some forms of cancer. And diagnosing the propensity to the disease. Mm -hmm. Then we will have to do studies on populations at risk and be able to follow those populations at risk uh, in, a, in, a, in a closer way. For example, the people who have uh, inflammation of the lung are people who have a propensity to develop cancer of the lung and we will be able to develop biomarkers. The idea is that investing in the development of biomarkers which are able to detect the disease earlier and earlier, we might be able to, through simple method, be able to decide very early on on an intervention that will uh, uh, control the disease. It's very clear that the cancer which is treated early has a greater, much greater possibility of being cured. So we are not talking about management of the disease, but we are talking about going for the cure at the earliest possible stage. You took Man Manchester as an example to show smoking made the difference. But if you take different cities and compare air pollution in would that be become more and more important? That's right. Uh, I don't have the statistics in terms of uh, relation to air pollution and incidence of, uh, of lung as clear as we have in the case of uh, smoking. But probably there will be statistics showing that the most polluted uh, uh, cities in the world, in, even when there is no increase in smoking, have a larger incidence of, uh, of uh, 
cancer because pollution will lead to inflammation of the airways. Inflammation of the airways will lead to COPD. COPD increases the, the chance of getting uh, lung cancer. Uh, in, the, in your talk, you said it was striking when you said from a business case model, it doesn't make sense at the level of the society to focus on the treatment rather than the prevention because you save so much more at the level of prevention with less investment. But uh, usually to have some uh, economic feature working, the important is not that the society as a whole has an interest, but that intermediate actors have an interest. I mean, state is always very bad at acting in its own interest. So the question is for people involved in the chain. I don't know, hospitals, drug, uh, uh, pharmacy, whatever. Where is the business model incentive in prevention rather than treatment? Well, one of the things that we have at the moment in Manchester is a very interesting situation, which is that the central government has decided to give back to Manchester the uh, health budget and the social services budget. And the idea is to see whether in the medium to long term we can educate the different actors, including from the population up, to see whether we can tilt the balance in favor of this situation in which prevention becomes the most important thing. We don't know whether we are going to succeed. Depends on education, depends on long term uh, working on these things, but we have to change the balance and increase the number of people who are diagnosed early. And all the actors in the whole uh, scale of people dealing with the problem should be educated to be able to deal with it effectively, efficiently, and rapidly. Thank you very much. I, I think, you? Okay. In, in, in one word, we don't, we don't have discovery nothing important to 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 resolve the problem but yes there are op operations and, uh, and, uh, and chemical but the survival of uh, patients with cancer is increasing all the time the treatments are becoming more efficient uh, the cures are becoming um, more also but still the per percentage is very small. And the problems we are having with the new treatments, especially in the area of immune uh, stimulation or transfer of uh, immune cells, is that the side effects that we are encountering with that type of uh, treatment make the treatment very complicated. We still have to do a lot of research to see if we can unleash the immunological system to deal only with cancer not with the rest of the tissues, which are normal. But I think it would, in that way is the way we are moving at the moment. But so far, we are still hailing an increase in lifespan of three months as a big victory. And I think that's uh, not what we want from a public health point of view and from society point of view. Just one more point came to mind with the business model. Uh, wouldn't it work as an incentive to involve the in, uh, life insurance companies? Because it, it's maybe in poor developing countries that might not work, but I would imagine that this would be some, something that would benefit life insurance companies if they were to somehow or other provide incentives cheaper cost or, or whatever. Has that been uh, the, uh, thought? It might have been, but it's not something that I am uh, uh, aware of. So first I'll make a comment on the last question. Uh, at least in the United States, it's a standard question to ask uh, on a life insurance application whether you smoke. So there, there certainly is built into life insurance a disincentive. I have no idea whether it has any effect on people smoking. Um, my question has to do with other issues having to do with whether uh, even giving people the knowledge, whether 
it'll have an effect. So for example, one of the most impressive uh, things among your slides was the fact that cervical cancer is 100% preventable. I assume this is mainly through vaccination against human papilloma virus. Right. Now, I'm not sure how it is in the rest of the world. In the United States, there's a lot of resistance to vaccinating uh, uh, children against human papilloma virus, with the argument usually being given that this will encourage teenage sexual activity. Now, I think there's very little that will discourage teenage sexual activity. <laughs> so, and, and I doubt very much that considering all the other bad things that can come from teenage sexual activity that, that cervical cancer is one of the things that people think about. Nevertheless, there it is. And in fact, we're in a situation where pediatricians are not bringing this up to parents as being something that um, is available to them. And um, so I'm wondering how this is in other countries. I'm also wondering, does the church have a position on this? I don't know, really. Uh, in the question of the vaccines, in the... In Yeah, uh, in general, uh, it's a recommendation okay. to have multiple vaccinations. Stop now. It's, I'm very sorry, but we have to proceed because it is time. Uh, I am going to ask Professor Ramanathan, who has joined us recently, to come to to give his talk.